thanks for uh, involving me in this, and, and listen, I'm um, delighted to see that uh, our, our friends in, uh, in Tokyo are having an earlier start than I am, so I have nothing to complain about. Uh, look, I think it's been a great discussion so far, and um, my congratulations to the team on a really, uh, really important report. Uh, I really would emphasise that from Australia we are watching these issues very closely, uh, the tensions in the Indo-Pacific, uh, but especially the East China Sea and the South China Sea. In fact, the Australian Prime Minister is going to uh, North Asia ne early next month, and I'm sure these issues will be on the agenda when he goes to, um, to Beijing, to Tokyo and to Seoul. Uh, it's not only that these countries, of course, are our largest trading partners, and of course, uh, Japan is uh, our, um, as the Prime Minister would say, our, uh, our, our closest friend in Asia, as others have said, our most successful relationship in Asia, but Japan is also uh, the ally of our ally, and any confrontation in that uh, region will affect us. I think it's worth emphasising that from where Australia uh, perceives this, this is not just about supporting partners, but as I think a few of the participants have emphasised this morning or today, it's about principles. Uh, principles of non-coercion and freedom of navigation. And I think that's where the Australian uh, diplomatic contribution to all of this has been very pointed in the past six months. You may be aware that our relatively new government, uh, which was elected last September, has uh, come under quite, uh, quite strong pressure from China since then because of statements we have repeatedly made uh, opposing coercion and opposing uh, coercive changes to the status quo, uh, particularly in the East China Sea. Now, I don't think Australia is going to change its position on that. I think it was the right position. Perhaps we expressed it a bit less diplomatically than we ought, but I think we got to the right place. What's important in this conversation is to know that uh, the first Australian statement on that issue actually came out of the trilateral dialogue with the United States and Japan uh, late last year. And I want to emphasise the value of the trilateral mechanism that we have with uh, Japan and the United States, I think to help, uh, to help understand and influence uh, strategy uh, in response to Chinese coercion. Now, I fully, fully endorse the um, two of the messages that I've heard today, and I think the Australian policy community would fully endorse them. One is the, uh, the absolute need for serious uh, communication, crisis management mechanisms and protocols in the East China Sea. It's, it's extraordinary and frustrating that this is not happening, and I fully appreciate that Japan has made repeated uh, requests for this, uh, especially in recent times. From our own research on this issue, which, which is ongoing, um, the basic principle still seems to apply, and that is that it's precisely because there is a lack of strategic trust uh, in the East China Sea, for understandable reasons, I guess, that we need crisis management mechanisms. And yet, every conversation I have with uh, Chinese analysts on these issues, including uh, recently during a, uh, a multilateral event that we hosted here in Sydney, uh, we get the message there will be no crisis management mechanisms while there is strategic mistrust, while there is a dispute with Japan. Now, I think even our Chinese interlocutors, interlocutors are beginning to realise how hollow that sounds, how um, really uh, unsustainable that position sounds. I like to think there is some degree of debate within China about whether its, uh, its strategy of no CDMs is the right approach. They are obviously using risk as a tactic, and I guess... Uh, the worry for us all is that it may well take a, uh, a crisis, uh, a confrontation with some degree of escalation before that issue starts to shift in China, and of course that is uh, at one level what we, what we don't want. Um, a quick word uh, about our Japanese friends before I, I close. I fully agree with um, former Minister Morimoto that uh, uh, it's important not to give China excuses to escalate, and I think uh, observers in Australia certainly uh, appreciate the restraint and professionalism of Japanese forces uh, on the uh, on the water and in the air. Uh, we are also aware that there's a need to, uh, I guess, to manage the political signalling 
that Japan sends, and we all know that uh, China has seized upon the um, the Yasukuni Shrine visit for its propaganda purposes. And um, I guess we have to ask uh, to what extent that that is uh, in the interests of our our Japanese friends. But finally, when it comes to the the principles of non-coercion, freedom of navigation, and and uh, the other principles that we've heard uh, emphasised today. I would stress that um, Australia strongly supports those principles, strongly supports the stance that's being taken on those principles. And I guess what we would like to see, as we've seen uh, in the South China Sea, or certainly what I personally would like to see, I think uh, the Australian government may be a little bit shy about expressing this, but we would like to see uh, the kind of approach we've seen in the South China Sea, where the Philippines has, in fact, appealed to the umpire, the only state, I think, in China's maritime disputes that has appealed to uh, a rules-based outcome, or at least a, a law-based outcome internationally under the uh, International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea. And it is a pity that the Philippines is not getting as much international diplomatic support as it ought to on that. Um, I'll leave my remarks there, but congratulations on an important report. It will certainly help to, um, to publicise it.